Welcome everybody this evening. This is the, the last meeting of the class for quite a while. I guess that's the bad news. The good news is Ajahn Barry is here this evening to lead the class. So it's a, and that's good news. Uh, and, let, and, just, and let me just look ahead because I'll probably forget to say this later on. We take a break now for quite a few weeks and the class is back again on the, I'm looking at my diary here, the something like the, mm, I'm guessing 14th, 40, I guess, four, yeah, it's the 14th of September. So please put that in your diaries, calendars, whatever. Um, so that's it. So we should uh, get on with the class. As I say, Ajahn Barry's here uh, and he'll explain uh, the format, what we do. Um, the everybody's on mute, I guess, um, and the, he'll be unmuted when it comes to questions and discussion and all the rest of it towards the end. Uh, meantime, if anybody has any questions at all, do feel free to pop them in the chat box because uh, uh, then, you know, I can hoover them up <laughs> and uh, pass them on to Ajahn Barry in due course. And actually, uh, Odin uh, Bidolf is uh, pulling the E strings this evening and he'll keep an eye on the chat box as well, just in case I miss anything. So feel free to send through any messages. And I, I think I always say this, it, you know, obviously, if you've got any uh, issues around practice or anything like that, yes, please send them through. Um, but if it's sort of a techie issue, like, you know, you can't hear us, that's quite important. So do ping that through as well. They might be able to do something about it. Anyway, welcome, everybody. It's great to see. Actually, it's great to see so many people here tonight. That's really good. And now uh, over to Ajahn Barry to lead the class this evening. Good to see you, Ajahn. Thank you, Colin. And uh, welcome, everybody. And uh, nice to see a, a couple of faces that uh, I know well. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Um, those who I do recognize will, uh, will know what I'm going to do, um, which is basically always the same. Um, I'll, first of all, I'll do a first introductory chant. Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arato samma sambuddhasa. Buddham danam sangham namasami. A little chant paying respects to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Um, uh, I like to to do it uh, when I'm going to to talk a little bit because it reminds me to to stay within the teachings as I see them within the within Buddhism. It's quite easy to get uh, carried away at times with ideas and views and opinions, as I'm sure we all know. Um, you know, as uh, most of you, or most of you, do not know uh, my encouragement, I think. So it's about mindfulness, which doesn't sound too different, too unusual. Everybody seems to be doing mindfulness. It's quite, uh, quite the thing to do at the moment. Um, but I think I'm coming from a slightly different angle here, is most of what I see as mindfulness is much closer to self-consciousness. I am doing this. I am doing that. I am cleaning my teeth. I am walking slowly. I am concentrating. 
My encouragement is drop the I am, so to speak. Just notice the action that is uh, in process. Say it's cleaning your teeth and back off. So there is awareness of cleaning the teeth, but not concentrating or it's not I am cleaning my teeth. There is cleaning the teeth. Now this is not uh, some intellectual game of uh, say trying to put the self, the, the separate self down. It's noticing that I do not need, when, when I concentrate on, on being so-called mindful, it implies that I'm doing it for some reason. I'm trying to become mindful. I'm trying to become wise. I'm trying to become enlightened or a good Buddhist. But remember, there is no I. There is no separate self in Buddhism. Now that's also a nice idea. But if we truly start to look, truly start to, to see when we are with the action or the meditation, the, the non-action, how is it then without projecting thoughts, without analyzing, without trying to become something, without trying to complete the lists, Buddhism's full of lists that we seem to have to, to complete. But I'm not sure we can complete or practice any of these lists if we're doing it from a self-conscious position. Because that's just uh, practicing I. It's just ingraining the idea of me trying to become. And if we look at the, the Four Noble Truths, the second is the uh, desire, the attachment to desire, the desire to become, or the desire to get away from. It's quite clear, this is a very basic teaching. But still we, we tend to, to come from that position of wanting to become, wanting to get, wanting to get rid of, instead of seeing things the way they are right now. Just being just doing the action, whatever we're doing. So we're walking, walking. We notice the feet on the ground. But if we just retreat a little bit, psychologically this is just retreat a little bit, being aware at the same time of, of say the sound of silence or the breeze or that open awareness Noticing that we don't have to project views and opinions onto everything we do. We can learn to slightly stand back. And this is not about rejecting, repressing or suppressing. It's about seeing prior to our conditioned views and opinions, just seeing things the way they are. Perhaps investigating, investigating the teachings, but not from a point of view of, I want to understand them, or um, projecting my ideas of what the answers may be, but seeing them as, I like to, to see them in myself, as seeds. Pose a question, which is a seed. 
that seed will germinate when the conditions are right. We don't need to interfere with the propagation of that seed. We don't need to, to uh, feel frustrated in any way when it doesn't germinate because it will germinate when the conditions are right. Oftentimes, most unexpectedly. Ah, yes. I see what those words meant. They were just signs pointing, pointing somewhere. And suddenly you arrive there and you have, there's a true understanding, not just another belief. Because oftentimes this is what we tend to do. We tend to exchange our belief values from believing in whatever could be Christianity or Islam or Jewish, whatever, it doesn't matter. But then we've become a Buddhist, so-called. We now believe in Buddhism, but all we've done is to exchange belief values. So seeing, understanding, understanding our ignorance, our ignorance of the way it is, our ignorance of Anicca, Dukkha, Anatta, our ignorance of the Four Noble Truths. I used to, uh, in my uh, much more gung-ho, serious days of practice, um, which uh, was <laughs> trying to become something, I used to think the uh, Four Noble Truths was for beginners, for, for people who are starting off on the, on the path. But now I realize it's the stone that drops in the water and everything, all the ripples that come out from that are all the teachings, I believe, of all the traditions. So spending time with these, looking at these, these teachings, so to speak, but not answering, not thinking you understand them. Understanding is understanding. We don't need to think I understand. So just through that simple practice of true mindfulness of that embracing of every situation. And this embracing is not me embracing. I can't embrace. This is just self. But this open, spacious awareness, there is a natural embracing because we're not interfering. We're not trying to get rid of or become or to grasp it. Continually practicing, as in bringing it into our ordinary everyday life. Remembering that mindfulness, once we start to, to settle down in our mindfulness, in our awareness, there is no reason whatsoever that we cannot be aware, be mindful while we're on the underground train, while we're at work, while we're chatting with a friend. Because it's about awareness, open, spacious awareness. So the fact that we might be sitting still, cross-legged or whatever, doesn't mean to say that uh, it's any more mindful or any less mindful, but we can bring this into our ordinary life. Int look, look, really pay attention. Is there a difference? Or do we make so-called meditation a, a special thing that we do 
maybe just every Thursday, maybe seven days a week. Or do we do that so we can get to know that place prior to our conditioned mind? Also, I mean, I do recommend that uh, as for myself, I, I, uh, I sleep before I sleep. I sleep through the body. I become, I'm open to that awareness. When I wake up in the morning, it's the first thing I do is to be with the body. Noticing, it's not the body, but noticing that how the mind, how the, what I call the heart mind is when we are truly aware. There's no thinking going on. But I didn't need to stop thinking because the mind so-called can only be in one place at one time. And when we are aware, when we are truly mindful, the mind is naturally open, spacious awareness. So I'll do the, uh, what I do, the a normal guided sweeping meditation, suggesting we, we go to various parts of the body. But it's not about the part of the body. Maybe, maybe the, the head disappears. Maybe the body disappears. Maybe you cannot be aware of your fingernails. Well, I've certainly never become aware of my fingernails. But in that moment, you can know how that heart mind truly is, that open, spacious awareness with nothing to get, nothing to gain, nobody to become anything. Keeping it simple. not trying to become, not trying to get rid of, keeping it simple, noticing change, noticing that when we are truly present, is there any suffering there? When we are truly present, is there a separate self there? This is not for me to, to tell you these things. This is for you to notice, to see, to experience. Truly, you know, especially in the classes like this, don't, don't waste our time. There's a true opportunity. We're sitting together, although it's a virtual meeting, but we are supporting each other. So sitting, finding a, a posture that's uh, conducive to your awareness. Not too stiff, not too relaxed. And, and I say these things only so we, it, the body can remind us because we're so easily carried away by our thoughts, views and opinions we uh, don't notice that we're just in a dream world but the body will generally tell us one way or the other getting to know that listening listening right now not not to the sounds i'm making or the words i'm saying just listening, listening from that place of open awareness. And this is how I encourage this so-called meditation, this awareness, this knowingness. So sitting in that posture that's helpful to you. 
I'm sure many of you are quite experienced in sitting in meditation, ideally pushing the crown of the head up slightly, not pushing anything, not straining anything, but just gently pushing the crown of the head up, which brings the chin in, which makes the face vertical. It's just a way of reminding ourselves when we start to, to wobble all over the place. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Depending on how you sit, I sit with my eyes slightly slitted open, which I find much more helpful than with them closed. It's easier to go off into the dream world once if the eyes are closed, but whatever suits you, whatever works for you. And don't necessarily stick to one thing. Experiment. This is all about experimenting. Ideally with the hands together in the traditional Buddhist mudra. Maybe noticing energies flowing between the hands when they're together. Again, not, uh, not questioning, not projecting views and opinions on this or attaching to it, but just seeing this energy, this energy in the body, this energy in the back, noticing any feelings, noticing any discomfort, if there is discomfort, look at those, look at that without commenting. Maybe ask, what is that, uh, what is that feeling? Is it mine? Sometimes it will disappear, sometimes not. But don't react, but respond. If needs be, move your posture. No problem. Keeping that awareness, moving from that place of awareness, if I'm not putting that very well, but being that place of awareness and moving. So being aware of the body from the tips of the toes to the top of the head. And most importantly, noticing how the mind, how the heart mind is when we are aware. There's no concentration needed here. There's just awareness. Becoming aware of the breath, a gentle breathing, not following the breath, not placing your attention on a particular part, say the nose or the throat or the chest, but just the normal, natural, gentle breathing. Listening, listening to that silence. Now becoming aware of the head, the top of the head and the back of the head. So say, perhaps you cannot be aware of any part, but that really is not 
not the point. The point is that we can be aware of our mind, of our heart mind in that moment. I mean, the heart of the mind. So being aware of the top of the head, the back of the head, and the sides of the head. Just moving your attention. And noticing when you move it. How is it? Becoming aware of the ears and the earlobes. Not projecting, not trying to find the earlobes. Just knowing that spaciousness. Now becoming aware of the forehead and the eyebrows and the eyes. and the nose and the nostrils. And the lips and the tongue and inside the mouth. and the chin, and the jaw, and the cheeks of the face. Now bringing the whole of your face and the whole of the head into that awareness. Maybe it's disappeared. Maybe you can't be, but you can know that open, spacious, Awareness. Now becoming aware of the neck and the throat and the shoulders. Noticing any sensations. 
but not interfering with them, just noticing them for their own sake. But always noticing from that place of awareness, that place of openness, Now becoming aware of the arms, from the shoulders down the arms to the elbows, down to the wrists. And into the hands, the palms of the hands, the fingers, the tips of the fingers. the backs of the hands, the knuckles, the joints of the fingers, the tips of the fingers, and the fingernails. Not projecting pictures or thoughts. This has nothing to do with the fingernails or any other part. It gives us an opportunity just to, to notice, to be aware. Now bringing your hands, your arms, your shoulders, the neck, the head and the face into that awareness, into that spacious, open awareness. Now letting that awareness spread down the back, from the shoulders down the back, down through the shoulder blades, the sides of the trunk, down through the back and the spine, the arch of the back, the small of the back. Just noticing if there are any extra energies around there, but not interfering or grasping, becoming aware of the coccyx and the buttocks and the hips. Now becoming aware of the chest, from the shoulders down the chest, down through the rib cage. A 
and the diaphragm and the stomach and the sides of the trunk and the belly area. Around the navel, again noticing any extra energies in these areas, but not interfering. Down through the intestines, into the groin and the hips. Now bringing the whole of your body from the hips, the front of the body, the back of the body, the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the neck, the head and the face. Into that awareness. As I say, perhaps you cannot be aware of that body anymore. Well, that's not important. You can know that open, spacious awareness that isn't dumb or stupid. Always maintaining that awareness. This is not about blanking out or going into a dark place. It's about being aware, acutely aware. Now, letting that awareness spread down from the hips down the tops of the legs, the backs of the legs, the sides of the legs. And from the knees down to the ankles.
you know, becoming aware of the feet, the heels, the soles of the feet, the sides of the feet, the balls of the feet, the toes, the tips of the toes. And the tops of the feet. The joints of the toes. The tips of the toes and the toenails. Now bringing the whole of your body from the tips of the toes to the top of the head into that awareness. Just that quiet, peaceful, open, spacious place. The place of knowing which cannot be known. Now becoming aware of the breath. Just a gentle breathing. Not following the breath. Not concentrating on the breath. Just breathing. Not commenting. Just knowing the breath, knowing that place of open, spacious awareness. Listening. Not to the outside sounds, but to the so-called sound of silence. So I'll uh, ring the bell in a short moment, in a short while. But please, just being that place of awareness, no matter whether we're sitting so-called formally or stretching our limbs, 
seeing that there is no difference. So stretching your limbs if needs be, but always, I don't know how to put it really, but always coming from that place of open awareness. Just being aware, just stretching, just doing whatever we need to do. But just being aware, not being lost in our thoughts, views and opinions about whatever, maybe how we should be, how we should be meditating, or what on earth is he talking about. Just be aware. I'll just give a couple of reminders. We'll, we'll do another period of, of uh, sitting, a couple of reminders. I won't talk so much. But as I said, you know, experiment. Experiment. See what happens when you move your attention from the head to, to the face or whatever. You can be aware of the whole of the body, all the parts of the, the body. You can be listening to the sound of silence at the same time. This awareness contains everything. We do not need to learn to concentrate. I've spent so many years trying to, to concentrate trying to quieten the mind, only to find that if there is presence, if I'm present, the mind is quiet. So start to look somewhere else. Look in this moment. See how it truly is without me striving to become or get away from. Knowing open. Normally we tend to uh, dismiss this open awareness because we're so used to trying to control the world, trying to become someone, trying to become better, trying to sort things out. But they will sort out if we get out of the way we are in the way, so we cannot fix the problem with the problem. We cannot fix samsara with samsara. Samsara being the world we create in our mind. I'll say something later, Meg, after the next period. Okay, so shall we uh, sit for another period and then uh, please do not hesitate to, to ask any questions, especially it's nice to have things clarified and because it's quite difficult for me to, to give all the right words for the experiences anyway.
So maybe finding a place that it's uh, easiest to angle the mind to. It might be the whole body or the breath, the sound of silence. It might be all of them at one time. Just noticing, just being aware, just proving to yourself that if there is presence, there is peace. don't need to be with one place in the body or the breath. Experiment what anchors the mind now may not anchor it in two minutes time. So gently without doing it to to quieten down or succeed or whatever just for its own sake, looking. So when the mind wanders, which is what it does, it's divisive by nature, it's not a problem. All we need to do is to be aware of when it wanders and then we are automatically back in the present moment.
Never scolding yourself for if the mind is extra lively. This is just putting petrol on the fire. Just come back. Just come back from second to second. Just return. Just re-establishing that awareness when the mind starts to wander, which uh, is normally the case after sitting for a while, after formally meditating for a while. Just coming back.
moving the attention if needs be from listening or to the to the breathing or to the whole of the body or part of the body and noticing How is the mind, how is the heart mind when we are aware? What happens to your mind when we listen? Noticing that the mind cannot be all over the place if we are truly listening. Not to particular sounds, but listening to that sound of silence. Noticing the same thing when we are aware of any, any part of the body or the whole of the body or the breath.
just re-establishing that awareness when the mind wanders. Just returning the mind with metta, with true metta, loving kindness, just to come back and be. So being aware of any discomfort in the body, not reacting to it, but responding to it. And if needs be, move. But first, just look at it clearly, instead of just reacting, which is how we normally live. So as before, I'll ring the bell in a short while. But know that place of awareness. So we can take this practice of awareness into our ordinary everyday life.
So I hope you uh, have got the idea of what I'm encouraging here. Every moment is an opportunity to be aware. Every thing that happens, every sensation we have, every word we speak, nothing in actual fact is obstructing, can obstruct our awareness. We can think, yes. Oh, how can I be aware when all these things are happening around me? Well, you can be aware of those things happening around you and maybe not get so involved or so upset by them. So trying to, to bring this into our everyday life, so this practice, this search for release, release from suffering, is understood. Even that is seen through. We don't need to search for that because our true nature is not suffering. We're just clouded by our views and opinions and our conditioning. So I believe that this form of practice allows us to get to know that, uh, that place of open awareness of no suffering. Meg, would you like to answer that, uh, ask that question again? You're, you're muted. Could we, uh, could we ask Odin? Sorry. To... Oh. It's all right. I got a message and I thought the message said the host isn't letting you unmute, but it didn't actually okay. say that. Okay. Okay. Well, I think he probably answered my question. Thank you, Barry. But I was just thinking, um, I think you've answered it. Don't you think you've answered it? Uh, well, uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to what the question was, but um... yes, no, I, I, I asked um, um, just to say a little more about noticing things that arise without reacting, and and I've taken it to sort of mean um, like you don't push anything away; you just kind of live live with it and accept it without. Yeah. 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 But please remember, I mean, I need to say this. It, it's, we cannot accept. But if we are present and aware, there is an acceptance. But oftentimes, yeah. especially in the early days, we try to accept these things. We try to em embrace these things. But actually, we, we need to find that place of open awareness, and then we truly accept them because we're not, we're not interfering at all. We're not trying to get rid of them or trying to become anything. No. Yeah, good, good. Thank you, Barry. Okay, Meg. Does anybody else have any questions or something that's not clear or? Uh, um, whatever. I'm hoping that um, everybody can unmute if they'd like to. Uh, nobody certainly thinks they're in the chat box yet, but that's open for business. So feel free. I'll bring Colin into it, get, maybe get things going. Do, do you have any, anything to add or a slightly different angle on what I'm trying to encourage? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
I know. I know. Well, you can't let me get away with it scot free. <laughs> this is a very honest practice. So, yes, we're very vulnerable. Uh, whatever, you know, whatever comes into the mind, uh, our first reaction is, oh, it's like that, is it? Um, and it's quite okay to acknowledge the fact that some things are pleasant. I'm just using a formula now that some things are pleasant, some things are mm -hmm. unpleasant, and stuff, some stuff is just neutral. But in a way, whatever it is at that moment, you know, we acknowledge that, we notice it. Um, and then what happens next? Well, as Barry says, you know, we're not going to dive in and grab it. We're not going to push it away. We're just going to uh, respond. Uh, how? Well, if we're formally practicing, I guess we then let go and redirect our attention back to a meditation object or just nothing. <laughs> in that sense, I mean, in that sense, you know, there's acceptance. You know, one can accept something without... Uh, without it being pleasant <laughs> and you acknowledge it's not pleasant <laughs> um, but we don't have to add more no. unpleasantness on top of it which is right. what we normally do isn't it yeah that's right that's right i remember some some years ago when i lived in in the monastery this is before i was became a, a bhikkhu a monk uh i was managing and i was getting in a terrible state over some difficulty and and i'm chatting to lung paul Samedo and i'm going on a bit and he just said well you can know it and that was a a, a stepping stone from me just to know just to see not from a point of analyzing it or therapizing it but just knowing what's going on but this knowing is not a, it's not, um, uh, I, I often say it sounds a bit, bit obscure, the known that, that is unknown, because that knowing is non, it's not graspable. There is just a knowing in that open spaciousness. If we were to grasp it, we would corrupt it, because again, it would become a, uh, the intention would be to get rid of it or to improve it or whatever. So get finding continually when, when, when this meeting stops, even right now, just being aware of your, your seat on, on the seat. Just being aware of the sounds not grasping words, not thinking, oh yeah, that's, that's, no, just being aware, just feeling, knowing, just being. I just, just got a, whoops, it's gone. It's a message there. Could you see these messages, Colin? I'm having... uh, no, I can't. I can see Karen said, uh, thank you very much. But I haven't seen any other messages in the chat box at all. They must be going through dire directly to you. Yeah. Rather than everybody. I've noticed that a lot of long-term meditators seem to have created some distance between their cognition and action. The distance created in watching the mind does seem to lead... to a kind of disconnect between thought and feeling. A bit of a flatlining, if you'd like. How, does it, how do you avoid this? <laughs> it's, there seems to be a lot of intention there. Inten a, a ten, you know, intention to, to become or get away from. This open awareness doesn't prevent us in any way 
taking part in our ordinary life, taking part in our thought processes. We can think from that place of awareness, but the, the difference in the quality of the thought is generally it's like uh, we, we get, you know, if we, if we like to surf the internet, we, we, we look, well, I do, I go to, to look at something and then something else pops up. So I go to the next thing and that can lead on to the next thing, the next thing. Thought is very much like that. One thought, it leads to another in the, the traditional, in the, in the Chinese tradition, they say like spears on a, on a battlefield, one after another. I've lost track of what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a dis can I can I step in? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah, I've got. Well, it's, not, it, it, it's this important distinction, I think, between an automatic reaction and a response. You know, the automatic reaction is by by definition automatic. We're just repeating a habitual bit of our behavior. Response is, there is a dis dis disconnect, you know, it's a dis disconnect. And if you like, one might say from a Buddhist point of view, there's an element of freedom, of stepping back from automatic behavior. It doesn't mean we don't do anything as a result. We respond if we want to respond. But notice, I mean, there's, we, we, there's a bit more clarity about our intention there. When I react to something, there's, 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 <laughs> the intention is an automatic, it, it's all automatic, it's all automatic. And I, I mean, in my mind, I have, I find it very helpful, this idea of well, dependent origination, which means, which means, well, let's not get into that at eight o'clock our time. <laughs> but it, to me, it's a story about um, automatic responses, actually, about habit habits and the way we, continually recreate those habits reactions and, yeah and uh, react yeah and the message is actually we don't have to mm. and that's what this practice i think is all about mm. yeah i i found my thread when when there is open awareness and we can think we can think we can think a solution out we can think a problem out but we have a choice from that place of open awareness. The first is to, to think that thought through. If we do think that thought through, it comes to an end. It doesn't lead on automatically to the next thought, to the next thought, to the next thought. Because we, from that place of clarity, we have a choice. There is awareness. We're not dragged around by Mara pulling the strings we're not just puppets of our conditioning. So that's, uh, that's what I was, was leading up to say. It's, a, it's an age thing. <laughs> Are there any more uh, questions? I think some folks have been sending messages through to, directly to Barry, fair enough. I, I haven't seen them. Yeah, um, it, it was just a thank you came up. It was nice. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Well, if people, uh, you know, and I, I, I'm one of them. I, I really can't type chat stuff when I'm on Zoom meetings at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's another age thing. <laughs> um, so if anybody actually wants to unmute and ask a real live question, please do. Otherwise... Well, it is eight o'clock our time. It's nine o'clock in Spain, which yep. is where Barry is. Yeah. Um, so maybe we should sort of wind things down. Um, I just want to thank Ajahn Barry for spending time with us. And I'm delighted to say that uh, he's happy to continue doing this, you know, kind of once a month after the, uh, the break. I think that's great. Um, what else? Um, 
Oh yeah, the, the break seems quite a long one, doesn't it? From pretty much now until um, second week in September, something like that. Um, and that, by the way, doesn't mean the Buddhist society is closed all of that time. It just means there are no classes. So if anybody is in London, around the back of Victoria Station and wants to drop into the Buddhist society, I do. Um, there's a library there. There's a little shrine room upstairs. You can meditate if you ask for the key. Go downstairs and have a cup, cup of tea or a cup of coffee. So I think the building, the society, the physical building actually closes um, around about uh, towards the end of August, actually, for a few weeks. Because the Buddhist society has a summer school then elsewhere. And uh, so the society will close then. So I, I'm there again, go, for goodness sake, don't take my word for it, but go onto the website and see when, the, when, you know, when it's open, what, 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 what you know, yeah, when it's open. And as I say, if you feel so inclined to drop in, it just means there are no classes. Classes begin again in that second week in September. And um, I want to thank everybody for coming, of course, as well as Ajahn Barry. I want to thank uh, uh, Odin, who's uh, behind the scenes, making this all work. And, I, I, and the, the point about the summer break is to give uh, Odin and Wangdu and all the other folks at the Buddhist Society a chance to <laughs> take their breath, you know, and have a bit of a rest themselves. Uh, and they deserve it. Barry, would you like to say a few final words? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, time for a break before the next class. Please, uh, please just don't go back to tossing the whole practice out the window. I'm not. I don't need to be aware for the next six weeks. You know, I can do what I like. Um, remember, everything is an opportunity. There is only now. There is only now. There only ever was now, and there only ever will be now. So now is the time to practice. If we forget to to be a pra we get involved in things we remember no way scold yourself just true meta practice just be it just come back knowing there is only now it's just a new pyre it's just a skillful means so this is when we start right now right now always so my best wishes to everybody um please do not forget to come back to the present <laughs> moment. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to ramble now. Take good care, everyone. Bye. And don't forget to come back to the class. Before, okay, before everybody goes, I've just, can I just interrupt? I've just seen a message come through uh, from Tatiana. Uh, obviously, is asking a question about the summer school. Uh, Tatiana, please go onto the Buddhist Society website. Every year there is a summer school down at the uh, Royal Agricultural College in Sirencester. It's residential. And I'm, I've no idea with any vacancies now. But if you're interested, just go and have a look. Go and have a look. And um, don't forget to come back here, as I say afterwards. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming this evening, everybody. And, and do have a good summer. Be as kind to yourselves as you are to everybody else, please. <laughs>